Derek Cummings, I'm sure that uh, most of you have seen me before. I'm here in South Wales in the United Kingdom. I'm sorry I haven't uh, blogged for a while and thank you for the messages I've had asking if I'm okay. Uh, yes, I've been okay. I've had a couple of exacerbations as to be expected with us with CRPD. But being the summertime, I like to get out as much as possible. I've got a scooter because I can't walk very far. It's stop, start, stop, start. It's many of you know and anyway I carry oxygen uh, so I get out on the scooter I get the camera with me all the camera gears with me take a few photos and uh, I have uh, as good a time as it's possible to have uh, for us with very severe lung disease <laughs> anyway today I'm going to talk about research um, and our hope for the future uh, for feeling better but so uh, the first thing is to be sure that apart from looking after yourself, optimism and the ability to laugh is one of the surest ways to have a nice long life, even with CRPD. I've had this for 30 years now. I tend to be fairly optimistic, even through the bad times. Uh, I keep going because I always have this motto, you've got to keep breathing uh, to take advantage of any future um, research that is in our favour. Um, and talking about research into this very slow progressive illness of ours because at the moment there is an enormous amount of research going on not only here in South Wales in Cardiff University but all over the world into uh, lung disease um, and although to date there's been no cure found uh, there has been various ways found to make our breathing very much better for a long time I've said uh, we've got to keep breathing because uh, as long as we keep breathing we will be around for better treatment to enable us to breathe easier and it's my firm conviction that one day there will be something that will cure us. Uh, so my motto, my recent motto, is captured by this famous Banksy image that you're looking at here that I have li literally in my living room that I look at all the time. Uh, there's a copy there and it's to remind me each and every day that there is always hope. I assure you agree, what better reminder than this wonderful piece of art. As uh, has been discussed in past blogs, uh, you must keep moving. And I'm not talking about marathons, uh, fast walks or anything like that. Uh, moving would do, even uh, moving within your house, uh, going to the kitchen and back. Uh, quite often, even if you get out of breath, keep at it. Uh, because moving, it helps to keep you in shape, helps to keep your muscles in shape. And sure as can be that uh, when you get to see one of these new uh, research ideas that have come up and you want to take advantage, they will demand a certain level of fitness. Uh, so, you know, try and keep yourself as fit as possible because anyway if you're fitter you're going to breathe better there's uh, no doubt about that as hard as it is and it can be hard sometimes I know that I've had exacerbations I found it very hard but I've had to keep pushing 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 until eventually I've managed to be in a better situation and sometimes you get a better situation it knocks you back down again and you just got to get up again and that's the way it goes I mean we all we all have bad times I get bad times even optimistic me and it's okay to have a pity day there's no problem we've all had a pity day as long as you get up and you get going again within a short time as possible because with CRPD once you give up make no mistake once you give up you've lost the battle and you're really on the way down so you must never give up you must try to stay optimistic just watch me <laughs> I'm optimistic anyway what about research what can be done for us with very severe CRPD. Uh, in my case I asked my specialist about the uh, Zephyr lung valves uh, inserted and what these do is they, they shut off the bad parts and uh, they enable you to breathe better. I can't really go into the technical part of it but believe me looking at the research they do work. The problem is only a small percentage are suitable for this. Uh, but it's worth asking, uh, there are thousands of these being done 
this week alone I think there's a, a dozen that I know of being done in America. It starts off with a high resolution, resolution CT scan. There's a, quite a few other tests where you get there. And even if they can't do the valves, they might be able to do something else because there's just so much going on at the moment. Um, for me, I begin my assessment next week uh, with a high res uh, CT scan here in the UK on bonfire night, <laughs> the 5th of November. To describe the valves, and you're looking at uh, one of the valves there by that finger that gives you an idea of the, of the size of the actual valves that are going to the lungs. That's a Zephyr valve that you're actually looking at there. And the valves are inserted into the lungs by the bronchial tubes uh, using a bronchoscope. Uh, they're inserted into the bad or the dead part of the lungs. And what this does is prevents the air trap in while at the same time allowing the good parts of the lungs to get more oxygen. It's along the lines of lung volume reduction surgery without the surgery. Uh, by cutting off oxygen to the dead or the bad parts of the lungs, that sectional lobe collapses and it allows the diaphragm and the lungs to work more efficiently. efficiently. And the lungs shrink too. The, the lungs actually shrink by quite an amazing amount. Um, and, but like all procedures, there is a small risk. But to me, for breathing better, it's worth that risk. A small risk, well, <laughs> I keep my fingers crossed with that one. Uh, this is very much like LRT without the surgery. Its aim is much the same. You could be suitable for uh, lung reduction therapy. They're not suitable for the valves. The name of the valves, as I said, are the Zephyr valves. Uh, but if you want more information, uh, Google is your friend. Just Google lung valves. Experimental techniques that uh, use bronchoscopy are being developed in clinical trials and they include using steam. And uh, the steam effectively scar the worst areas of the lung and they shrink it down and I believe this stops the air trapping which will enable you to breathe better but this is very much at the moment in experimentation. Uh, another, uh, another one is to using wire, wire coils and they're called uh, lung volume reduction coils and uh, what they do is they retention the floppiness in your lungs because don't forget you, you lose the, the springiness that's why they get longer and longer and you get long lungs like what I've got uh, and by doing that that stops the air trapping as well which makes it easier to breathe it allows you to empty your lungs more effectively oh, excuse me, with air as well another, another thing they're doing is they're, they're targeting the nerves that are in the lungs I'm not sure what they're doing there but uh, whatever they're doing it improves the airways relaxation which means that you again breathe easier so there is quite a bit going on at the moment and I'm sure there's other things going on that I know absolutely nothing about. There's a big, big push by uh, all countries, not just here in, uh, in Wales, in Cardiff University, all over the world. So especially in some of the big American universities as well. Uh, to see if you're suitable, uh, you'll need to take the same test as, as, as the vowels, but you could always ask your specialist if there's any trials going on in your area that uh, may be of help to you. Now, it can't be stressed more that these tests are being evaluated in specialist centres that are only available as part of clinical trials. So you'd have to enter a clinical trial for anything but the Zephyr valves that I've been talking about. If you're interested, talk to your GP or specialist. As I said, there's always hope, you know. Uh, so, but if you're not suitable for any of the treatment that we've got at the moment, I always say, keep breathing as long as you keep breathing give it time eventually something will come along because I'm sure that eventually there'll be something for all of us and uh, it will come about very very quickly because governments are very keen uh, to get this sorted because so many people million more than a million people well over a million people have CRPD so many people have CRPD and it's such a debilitating illness and it costs so much money in lost work in disability and everything else they want it sorted as much as we want it sorted so we can breathe uh, and one day there'll be an enormous difference and there will be a treatment for you. Uh, remember my motto, there's always hope. Uh, keep hoping, keep breathing, keep wishing.
Okay, so that's me for today. I hope that uh, what uh, you've heard from me today has given you some hope for the future. That it has made you a little bit more optimistic and uh, it's helped to take some of your fears away. As I say, you can keep going for a long time with CLPD. All you've got to do is to stay optimistic, keep listening to the research uh, and, you know, why not to go and get the same Banksy picture as I've got in my living room that has got on it. There is always hope. Anyway, for now, bye bye and uh, I'll be back again in the near future uh, with another blog. Bye bye then from South Wales. Thank you.